Welcome back to That's Clever. This next artist is from Wilmington, Delaware. Once his throwing arm is warmed up, he creates a vase with a nice ring to it. Hi, I'm Steve Batts from Wilmington, Delaware. When I'm not keeping this thing running, I'm making things out of clay. Like this, it's my donut vase. This is my studio. I mix all my own glazes, and I work on my potter's wheel. First, I take the clay and make it into a ball. And then I wedge it. Wedging takes the air bubbles out of the clay and gets it ready to spin around on the wheel. For this piece, I'll need two pieces of clay. One's gonna be a little bigger than the other. It's ready to throw. This is a plaster bat. I attach it to the wheel head and then I throw the clay on the plaster bat. And then I'll start to center it. Once it's centered, I clean up the wheel a little bit and then I'll flatten the piece down to get it ready to open up. Now I'll make the first opening. I'll open up all the way to the wheel head and then pull the clay out till it's as wide as I want it to be and squeeze it to make sure that it's still good and centered. Now it's time to make the second opening. And what I'm gonna do here is open up right in the middle of the ring of clay. So I have an inside wall and an outside wall. I wanna bring the outside wall up as high as the inside wall. This is a smooth white stoneware clay. For me, the color of the clay and the clay itself is an important part of the decoration of the pot. It's not just the glaze that makes it beautiful, it's really the clay. At this point, I'm ready to join the walls together. I'll trap a bubble of air inside, and that'll help to support the pot so that I can shape the outside just a little bit. Once the two walls are together, I pull them together and throw them closed so it looks like it's one continuous wall all the way around. And it makes you wonder how I got my hand in on the inside. Now I want to smooth the outside wall, and I'm going to use this soft plastic rib. Once the piece is in the shape that I want it to be in, what I'll do is I'll trim some extra clay off, clean it up a little bit, and get ready for the next one. This is a turning tool. I use it to remove the extra clay from the piece. I'm done throwing the donut part. Now I'm going to throw the vase that this fits into. What I try to do is have one nice clean shape so it all flows together. So for this vase, when I look at the donut, I see the vase bellowing out from the bottom a little and then coming up to the top. I'll let the piece sit on the bat until it's dry enough to come off, then I pop it off. This still isn't dry enough to come right off the bat, so I'm gonna use a cutting wire and slice it off. This is a centering tool that helps me hold the piece on the wheel head. This is a loop tool. It takes the extra clay off the piece. Now it's time to trim the foot of the vase. I use these special arms to support the piece so that it doesn't wobble as I trim it. Now I'm gonna throw the bottom to make sure that the bottom doesn't crack. To finish the foot, I'll use this loop tool and carve a little notch in it so that I have a place to put the wax and keep the glaze off it and give it a nice finished look. Now that the vase is finished, I'm gonna cut it in half. These are calipers. I need to know where to cut, so I'm gonna take a measurement on the ring and then transfer it to the vase. This is a knife. I'm gonna use it to slice into the vase where I make a mark. I have to put the ring inside the vase, kind of see which way it goes together. And then what I'll do is I'll trim it so it fits. Okay, the pieces all fit. Now it's time to score and slip and put them together. Using this rib with sharp edges, I'm gonna score the clay. It helps to make the clay ready to put together again. Now I use a little bit of slip from the slip bucket and glue the two pieces together. Using the same technique, I'll score and slip the top, attach the top, and then throw the two pieces together. Because I have to let the piece dry overnight till it's almost leather hard, I made another vase. Now I'm gonna carve it. The first step is to measure the diameter of the vase so I know exactly how many segments I'm gonna make and the size that they're gonna be. The only math that I'm using to carve the vase is to get each segment the same width. Now I'm ready to carve the vase. I want to try to match my carving to the shape of the vase. For this, I think I'm going to use a series of drapes and triangles.
Because it takes about two weeks for this vase to dry, I went ahead and made another. This one's bone dry and ready to go into the kiln. Because it takes 15 hours for the piece to come out of the kiln, I've made another one. I've glazed the inside, I've glazed the inside of the ring, and I've waxed the bottom. I'm about to spray it with a green glaze. And to protect from overspray, I've stuffed rags on in the inside and on the top. I've finished glazing the piece. Now I'm going to take it back to the kiln, fire it to 2300 degrees for eight hours, and it's done. I went ahead and made this one. And now my donut vase is done. Sweet. Stay tuned. We heard it through the grapevine that this artist from Tennessee creates a wine rack that can really stand on its own four legs. Next on That's Clever. That's Clever.